Hello, this is the introductory episode to how to use Wasabi Wallet 2.0. In this video, you will get to see certain features of the wallet and how you can use them, how you can receive, how you can send, and core features of the wallet. So yeah, let's get started. On the opening screen, if you were just upgrading from Wasabi 1.0, you will be greeted by a login screen. Here you need to log in to be able to access your wallet. Otherwise, if you're a new user, you will be greeted by a welcome screen that after managing to navigate through, you will be asked to create a wallet, import an old wallet, recover a wallet, or to use a hardware device. But otherwise, if you already managed to get started, let's get going then. After you type in your password, you can press open and the wallet will immediately start loading. After you press open, there will be a, a brief loading period for the block free to start loading, as you can see it right here. After a few seconds, it will load and will immediately show you the main screen of your wallet. The main screen of your wallet will display balance information, privacy progress, exchange rates, date and time, labels, incoming bitcoins, outgoing bitcoins, and balance that you currently hold. Once you start at the wallet, an automatic coin join countdown will start, which will have about eight minutes left before I start coin joining. But if you don't want to wait, you can press play already, and it will start immediately coin joining your funds. The auto coin join will immediately start after eight minutes have went by, and the coin join will immediately start. But if you don't want to wait around, you can always just press play. As you can see, it already connected to the ZK Snacks coordinator and asked about the round CDLs. So now what's going on is that it is now attempting to participate in a coin join round. Bobby Sabi coordinator now features variable denominators within one coin join. That means that there can be multiple denominators within one round so that your outputs will be much more different than what is used to be in Wasabi 1.0. But anyway, as of right now, the wallet is actually hot wallet, which is going on with real Bitcoin on mainnet. So let me show you around how you can receive some Bitcoin. So just go to the top right corner and click on receive. So basically how we change around Wasabi 2.0 is that you need to start using labels. These labels will help you identify where from certain transactions are originating from and who will basically see your transactions. Let's say if I have some money on Coinbase and I want to evacuate that money, or if I'm receiving some money from my mother or father, I can label it with those labels. So let's type it in. Let's say I'm getting money from Coinbase, but my mother knows about it also because I told her I have money. Of course, you can have some advanced features like look at the unused red receive addresses, but you don't need to care about that right now. If you generated the addresses with the labels, you can always just take later on look at them if they haven't received any money yet and you will be able to use them with this section like this here. So let's hit continue. So when you press continue, the address will automatically like, copy it onto your clipboard and you can go and paste it onto the exchange or anywhere else or scan the QR code to send money onto it. The rest will be automatically taken care of. So since we already went to receive some Bitcoin, we can try and send some money. We're just gonna use the, the address that basically gave us. So we're gonna copy and paste it there. Now I can type in the amount of Bitcoin I wanna send. Or if you wanna send actual dial dollar value, I mean dollar amounts, sorry. And that means that you can just type in like, I wanna send like $100 worth of Bitcoin. There's gonna be 333,000, I don't know how many sets. And then you press continue. You type in the recipient's name or, or entity's name that is receiving the, mo the money. Let's see if father is receiving it. And then every information about the transaction will be displayed. A total of Bitcoin that you're sending, what will be the address that received the Bitcoin, what are the labels that are currently used, and you, how long your transaction will take, and how many fees it will take to send the transaction. You can always change the, the transaction fee by clicking on this icon and then adjusting the slider on the bottom. And then when you're satisfied with everything, every detail of your transaction, you can press continue or confirm. In a other wallet that would already have private Bitcoins, this process will be entirely different. It will have no interaction with labels because if you're sending private Bitcoin, you can merge those Bitcoins and it will require you no labeling to use. Just you have to label who you are sending that money to, to be able to remember it. Otherwise, the wallet will sometimes offer you options how to improve your, your privacy by adjusting your transaction in a way that you're not using change addresses. With this, we try to improve on how people basically preserve their privacy, because when you're trying to use your own techniques to manage your UTXOs, people make much more mistakes than having to rely on an automated system. So let's get out of this menu here. Other option that you can do, or to take a look at, is in the top right corner. You can take a look at your wallet information up to type in your password, which I don't have right now, so we're not going to look at it. But the, it usually contains your XFlub information and everything else that you can use to view it in a different wallet. You can also take a look at the wallet information screen. You'll be able to see things like option for starting automated coin joins, the auto start coin join threshold, the enemy discord target that you want to set. You can set it to any amount that you want to have it to. 
and you can check your backup seeds with this option here. Other options, for example, wallet statistics will show you how many utixels are there in your wallet, how, many, how much is the unconfirmed balance, what is the confirmed balance and the total balance of the wallet. Other options also include when you're adding a wallet, create a new wallet, let's say I want to create a new wallet, I will have to set a password, I'm going to set a super ultra secure password, one, two, three, four. Then I need to write this down, but I'm just going to take a picture because, you know, I don't have a time, you know, during this recording to, you know, really care about it. But don't ever take a picture of your seed because you're just going to get robbed if you send any money onto it. So I don't recommend you to do that. After you tip down your, uh, your recovery phase, uh, make sure that it is clearly legible and you don't miss, mess up any words because afterwards you need to type in the words that is requesting to verify that you actually written down the passphrase. So on the next screen, if you manage to type in your recovery phase, you can choose what option you would like to use for your coin joins feed. You can minimize costs, maximize fees, or maximize privacy based on your own preference of how much you want to spend on fees overall. Or you can manually customize it. In the manual customization, you can enable automatic coin joins, set your enemy to score target, and the coin join time preference, whether you would like it done in hours, days, weeks, or months. Then when you're done, Click on continue, the wallet will say that your wallet is always added to Wasabi. You press done. You need to then type in your password again and load the wallet if you're starting out new. This is how it will look like when you're opening the wallet while it is empty. In the corner, you can see the information about whether a tour is running or not, how is the backend connected, and how many peers are connected to your wallet. In the settings, you can change in the general section, bright and dark mode. You can also change around whether or not Wasabi will start in the background when your computer starts and every other option here. Even in the Bitcoin option, you can also enable an experimental Bitcoin Nuts version that you can start up to run a Bitcoin full node as part of your Wasabi setup. So you don't have to rely on other servers for using Wasabi Wallet. All that is already out of the box private with Bitcoin Neutrino. It is fairly private this way also. So it is very convenient, even on the first setup, you want to use Bitcoin privately without leaking out your XFOP for other on-chain spies. You can also add new wallets in this option or use discrete mode, which hides all your wallet information. So now the coin join is currently going on. It will take a bit of time before it finishes. You will see a shield in your transaction logs when a coin join has successfully finished. If you click on the listing side or click on the expand, you can see the information about how much fees you've spent on a coin join or how much it costs. Other information like how many sets you've spent on fees, if it's confirmed or not, the date range of your transactions, the amount of coin join that you take participate in, and all the transaction IDs that are contained within. In the upper corner, you can see additional information, the same as like you can add the wallet broadcaster, you can broadcast transactions here using your wallet completely privately. You can see settings. Here you can access other files like logs and data folders. So it's much more convenient to debug if you're having issues. If you're having issues with the wallet, feel free to reach out to us on Telegram or visit our official Discord channel. You can find all this information on our Twitter account at Wasabi Wallet. So that's all for now. I hope it is enough to get you started with Wasabi Wallet 2.0 and I hope it will be handy for you in the near future. Bye-bye.